Good morning, my friends at Bethel. It's good to be with you this morning. I wrote an article probably a couple of weeks ago entitled, How Long, O Lord, How Long? And I guess it's particularly uh, appropriate now, especially in light of the province-wide mandates that we have. And uh, it seems like things are tightening up and that uh, the pandemic is ramping up in some ways. And so I'd like to share that with you uh, for our devotion this morning. The question came up on one of my visits where the person asked me, Pastor Marv, how long do you think this pandemic is going to last? And I knew the individual wasn't exactly asking me for an answer because she knew that I didn't have an answer to it. The question really was born and it came out of exhaustion. Stuff was piling up in her life. The question was the result of her feelings that she was barely able to hang on. And I responded saying that you're feeling overwhelmed, aren't you? This has really been prolonged for you and for your life and for your family, hasn't it? That question, how long? Who of us hasn't voiced that question or at least wondered? I've had that question asked of me several times, I guess, since the last night's news conference. The question is raised by a teenager whose life and plans have been disrupted or the school teacher who has had to pivot time and again and will have to do it again. The healthcare worker who doesn't know how much more she can give, can she hang on? The child who's confused by all the changes, the back and forth, the back and forth that is going on in his life. Or the restaurant server or the cook at the restaurant who fears that there might be another shutdown. The senior in the care center who's dealing with the possibility of another lockdown. The business owner who is on the brink of folding or the leader who in the midst of all the uncertainties knows that any decision that a person makes will be, there will be someone who's going to be hurt and there'll be someone who's going to criticize. And that's only a short list of all who are crying out. Some of them are crying out literally, some are silently in their hearts crying out, O oh Lord, how long, O oh Lord, how long? I guess I don't really need to hear the questions asked or the conversation. You can see the, the, the stress in the faces of the people. You can hear it in the tone of their voice. Tension, stress, fear, anxiety, mental health issues, the spike in addictions. Numbers are asking, how long? And we're wondering if we can hang on much longer. When I think about that question, to cry out how long? I believe it's to stand in good company. In desperation, King David cried out in Psalm 13. He said, how long, O Lord? It was a time when he felt abandoned and when he se it seemed to him that God wasn't listening and maybe he wasn't even, he didn't care. David pleaded with God four times, he asked, how long? four times, and it indicates that his was a prolonged situation. It was dragging on and on and on. He didn't know how much longer he could hang in there. In spite of what he was currently experiencing and feeling, contrary to all surrounding circumstances, he says, I will trust in your faithfulness. God had been there for him in the past. David had experienced the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God many times in the past. So he says, I will trust and I will sing to the Lord for he has been good to me. There's a particular text in the book of Exodus chapter three that I've turned to many times as assurance for, that God really cares. The situation is this, that the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt. They were enduring intense sufferings. God said to Moses, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned because of their suffering. So I have come down. Our God does indeed see, hear, is concerned and cares, and he comes to rescue. Actually, we see this same story. We see the cycle of this story over and over in the Bible. We see it there time and again about our God of compassion. He comes to rescue. Ours is the God of compassion who promises to be with his people. Through the prophet Isaiah, he says, when you pass through the waters, they will not sweep you away. I'll be with you. 
When you walk through the fire, the flames will not set you ablaze. God doesn't say, if you pass through difficult times or if you walk through trying situations in life. He says, when. God knows when we're going through fear-filled and anxious times, times of uncertainty and stress. He knows, He cares, He's concerned. He has come down and He promises to be with His children. In Jesus, God put on flesh and blood. He became one of us and one with us and has, like us, experienced the uncertainties, the trials, the suffering, the pain, and the sorrow of life. The writer in the book of Hebrews says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us in our times of weakness, but we have one, that's Jesus, who was tempted in every way just as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive, receive grace and find mercy to help in our time of need. What a gracious invitation. We can approach the creator of the universe. We can in confidence in our time of need approach the one who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is our gracious Heavenly Father and He cares. The lady I was visiting with knows that the COVID numbers are spiking again, that we're heading into the fall with all the uncertainties of what this will mean. Her fears are real. The cry of her heart is, how long, O Lord, how long? For her and for all of us, God's word is, say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come to save. And so we may feel like this pandemic is dragging on and on and on, and we may be overwhelmed with the challenges on our plates. We may feel anxious and fearful. Yet with David we say, But I will trust in your unfailing love. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are a God of faithfulness, a God of compassion, a God in whom we can trust. You're faithful to all your promises. And we desperately cling to those promises at this time. Be close to us. Give us the assurance of your presence with us that we do not have to go through these difficult times alone. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen.